Get him all around! 51! 51! So yeah, bit of a character, uh, big oaf as we call him. As a soldier, professional as everybody else, but the biggest tramp you've ever met. Um, couldn't iron his kit, even if his kit was iron, he'd still look the biggest tramp in the world. I then tried to find some decent pictures to put on the TV if Frankie had died. But to be honest, we couldn't find any because they've all of him dressed as women dressed as fancy dressed people and I think the only one we found of him was just a sort of random picture that we could just sort of put on the TV. What happened on that day? Well we got tasked and it was sort of my joint led patrol with um, one of the sergeants who was working with the Gurkhas. What happened was I sort of the day before I made the um, decision really after a, a vehicle from another unit got IED down the road so Having seen the ground, I sort of made the decision that the night before to up armour the patrol and Frankie volunteered to drive. Um, we left early in the morning, first light, rolled out um, to do this recce. So we left in a four vehicle formation. About two, three kilometres after we left the camp, we'd done our preparations. We then came to what we call a vulnerable area or a vulnerable point, and that's where we have to stop, secure the area, check it for any danger because that's so it's a sort of choke point, and um, if you're going to get attacked, that's where it's going to happen. I checked the area for myself. I didn't like any of it really because it was um, not an ideal place to be in, but you've got to do what you've got to do. So I, I sort of physically walked the route, and then I was sort of happy with what I was doing from, from my vehicle's point of view. So I got back in. As I got down this steep, sort of embankment which is about a metre drop with the, with the vehicle, I was waving the vehicles forward and I just got him on the PRR radio and just said right Frankie go move forward and I was just about to step up above the sort of the feature and the, the explosion went off massive bang and I initially thought RPG so I shouted RPG took cover uh, it wasn't actually until I saw the the vehicle parts, like the bonnet, fly over me. I actually knew then it was a, the vehicle, not an, not an RPG. I sort of prepared myself for body parts. I sort of rushed up to see the vehicle above the feature and just ran in to see what was going on. And then Frankie was furthest away and I got the Frankie sort of first and concentrated on him. Um, he was actually un totally unresponsive, so I didn't think it was good for Frankie. because Frankie was facing me and I was uh, obviously cleared his airway. And the first thing I noticed was this massive bit of chewing gum at the back of his throat. And I, I bollocked him and says, you know, sort of, fuck's sake, Frankie, you, know, you had to be chewing chewing gum, didn't you, when you're gonna get blown up. I did an initial survey on him and I couldn't find anything. Initial blood, I also shouted the medic and it seemed to take a, a minute or so um, after clearing his airway, and I just couldn't really find any obvious uh, injuries to Frankie. If you were in that position above you, mm. would you have aborted that patrol before it went out? I'd have planned it better. Simple as that. Well, when we first saw him, he was obviously unconscious in a medically induced coma um, with an external frame on his hips but just looked like Simon but sleeping. I initially thought they were going to tell me he was dead but then they said no he was just very seriously injured and um, it was just devastating. Attached to. Attached to. 
Two nine commander. Two nine commander. Royal artillery. Royal artillery. Why did you join the army? I've always wanted to. I've always wanted to. Ever since I was tiny. Ever since I was tiny. I don't know why. You don't know why. Where have you served? Where have you been? Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. Iraq. Iraq. Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone. And Afghanistan. And Afghanistan. Do you remember what happened? No. No. Oh, my memory. All your memories. Are because. Are because. People have told me. People have told me. And I've made my own. And you've made your own. Memories out of it. Memories out of it. Do you blame anyone for that incident? The Taliban. The Taliban. What sort of thoughts about the incident went through your mind with what people had told you? What? Why? Why did I? Why did I? Hit the bomb. Hit the bomb. Was it my fault? Was it my fault? Do you think it was your fault? No. It was just unlucky. It was just unlucky. And we were in the right place. That you were in the right place. At the wrong time. At the wrong time. Do you think the equipment that we had when we were out there, do you think that failed you? Like the vehicle you were in or the equipment you had? Yeah. Yeah. Because if. Because if. We would have had. We would have had. Armour underneath. Armour underneath. The Land Rover. The Land Rover. The Blast. The Blast. Would have been pushed. Would have been pushed. To the side. To the side. Do you think the army's given you sufficient help to get mm. where you are now? They got rid of me. They got rid of me. Because. Because. When you look at me. When you look at me. You couldn't there. You couldn't. Tell. Tell. I was in the army. I was in the army. And got injured. And got injured. Because. Because. I'm not missing. You're not, I'm not missing. A leg. A leg. My injury. Your. My injury. My injury. Is invisible. Is invisible. What's the positives of you being like you are now? What's the positives? You must have some. I can't think of any. You can't think of any. <laughs> well, I met Frankie first when I was at 29 Commander together. I was his Sergeant Major. We, we were unaware until he flew into Bastion and then we realised what the injuries were and that it was a sort of not very comfortable he was going to live. So when I went and saw him and he was sort of been put in this metal frame to keep sort of his body parts together, we thought, shit. So that's when the boss started writing, finishing up the obituary, whether it was sort of, whether it was needed when he flew back to the UK. We obviously did Simon's Medals Parade in Selly Oak. And we presented Simon's Afghanistan Medal at 12 o'clock first. That stage he'd come out of sort of his coma, but was, to be honest, was a mess. So then we needed to look at progressing him forward to sort of get him out of Selly Oak. We went and looked at uh, the neurological hospital in Putney. So obviously Simon went in there, couldn't do nothing. Started doing his physio there, started doing all this stuff. His, his main goal, Simon's then, was to get him to Headley Court. Now Headley Court, fabulous place, but dealing with brain injuries at the time, you would go in a Headley Court and the brain injuries would be in a green port cabin on the side, sort of forgot about, which um, was a bit of a shock for me. 
do you remember what type of therapy helped you with your injury as you were trying to get back on track? Walking. Walking. Helps me. Helps me. It really helps my brain. Because it helps my brain. As well. As well. You've now moved here, you've got lots of animals. And why, do, why have you got lots of animals? I like them. You like them. Does it help with your brain injury? Does it does it help make that better? Probably. Probably. What's a normal day for you? Get up. Get up. That's every day. That's every day. Have a wash. Have a wash. Do the walking. Do some walking. Feed my animal. Feed your animal. Animals. And then. And then. Go to therapy. Go to therapies. If I have them. If you have them. Obviously, you go to the commander reunion every year, yeah. Every year you come there, you have a little to goal that you go up the bar and to walk. To walk. A little bit. A little bit. What about the people that are there for you? What have you got to say hey. about them? Thank you. Thank you. And you know who you are. And you know who you are. And you know what you've done. You know what you've done. What would you say about any youngsters now, girls, boys, about who want to join up? What would you say to them? Don't do it. Don't do it. Why? Because of. Because of. They say. They say. We look after you. We look after you. If you get injured. If you get injured. But only if. But only if. You get injured. You get injured. In the right way. In the right way. 